One of the things I dread the most in life is emptiness and loneliness. You have nobody around you and nobody to help you. You feel a weird, unknown feeling and you absolutely hate it. Now imagine that, but there is never an end to the emptiness. The only thing with you are flickering lights, yellow rooms, and escape is nearly impossible. The back rooms have been a topic in my mind for almost a year now. The back rooms are a fictional depiction of your personal nightmare. One day, you suddenly vanish from the world and everything is so meaningless in your life now. You can cry for help, try to survive, and even find ways to escape, but your fate has already been sealed the moment you clip through a null zone. I have gotten so invested in anything backroom related because of how much it interests me. It can make for good horror as people fear being alone, and to be honest, so do I. Throughout the years, there have been many series of the backrooms, all expanding upon the world of one singular 4chan post. Six months ago, I covered a series about the backrooms made by Kane Pixels. I mentioned in that video that I may someday make a sequel to that video once there are more videos to go off of, and surely there have been. Since that upload, there have been 9 brand new videos that we have yet to cover on this channel. Let me reinstate that this series has nothing to do with any of the other series such as the Liminal Archives and the Wiki. Before you watch this video, I suggest checking out my first video about the backrooms. If you've watched it and your memory is fuzzy, then here is a quick recap. Our story begins with a company named Async, which is a research facility. Their goal is to find a way to provide infinite storage and they do so by finding the backrooms. However, we know that these rooms are not safe. In the last video, we discovered that a weird spider entity was found on one of the cameras that they set up. Ever since that video, things have become way more dangerous. For today's video, I'll be going over the 9 new videos and giving my thoughts and opinions while theorizing near the end of the video. Without further ado, let us once again enter the back rooms. Before I remember, Prototype was actually the shortest video in the series. It is short, but shows a good amount of lore here. The video is titled Prototype because this device that is shown is actually the prototype of the threshold we have seen in many videos. The beginning of the video does not seem that important, but we are shown the outside of a lake with trees. Note that this may be important later as we are shown something similar in a later video. In this video, we see that this prototype, while not being able to be as amazing as the threshold, still have the ability to teleport items somewhere. This somewhere is most likely the back rooms, although Async didn't know that at the time. I like how we were given an early concept of how the threshold once was. We are also given the location and time of where this all took place, which I thought to be nice as well. Other than that, not really much to go off of here because of how short the video is. I enjoyed this video for what it was and thought it was a nice addition to the series. We now move on to the video titled Pitfalls. Here we are joined by an async employee named Marvin and a few others going on a backroom tour expedition. After a short while of his crew wandering and doing a few tasks, they encounter an interesting area of the backrooms. A bunch of squared holes leading to who knows where. An employee named Mark decides to cross the bridge of holes and makes it to the other side. On the other side is a door Mark opens and he sees something that leads him into shock. We have no idea as to what Mark is seeing here, but we are never shown what it is. Mark needs a camera to get the footage of what he is seeing, and so they task Marvin to cross over to the other side. Unfortunately, Marvin is clumsy and he falls down one of the holes. We are then presented with a brand new location. Marvin's team now has their main focus on bringing Marvin back to them. While Marvin's crew is coming to save him, he hears a strange voice. What was that? What? I don't, I don't know. Kind of like... I think there's somebody down here. This voice oddly sounds like a person screaming for help. Marvin, being the nice guy that he is, decides to go where this voice is coming from to see if they are in need of help. Eventually, he gets to an area where the back rooms are depicting the outside world. I suppose this is something similar to what Mark saw, however, from what it looks like it was probably daytime. In Marvin's case, however, it was nighttime and he wandered around this strange looking street. He eventually finds a house where the voice is coming from. This house seems small, but it's actually pretty big, and while Marvin is exploring, he notices weird, unusual signs and even sees a backpack with supplies. He comes to the conclusion that this cry from help is in fact from a person. We are to believe that whoever this is must have been someone who no-clipped inside of the back rooms. Throughout the video on your second or third watch, you notice that the audio from the person is repeated. 
Now we know that Kane wouldn't be lazy to just use the same piece of dialogue, and so when Marvin comes closer and closer to the voice, he finally gets a look at who this is. Sorry, can you repeat that? Marvin? That's not a person. What is that? That is not a fucking person! The question transforms from who this is to what this is as it doesn't look like a human. We then realize that this person is actually a bacteria monster and it starts screaming and chasing Marvin. This chase scene can make anyone uncomfortable because of the screams of this monster are downright horrifying. Marvin eventually runs to the location he fell from and is able to successfully flee as he is able to climb back up. Marvin coughs a little bit and the video ends there. The video overall was pretty terrifying and it brings up a lot of questions. We learn that the monster can possibly imitate its past victims. I think that this goes with the popular theory that once a person no clips into the back rooms after a long time, they eventually become into the bacteria themselves. That is how this monster is able to imitate a human almost perfectly because they are once human themselves. We also learn that there is more than just regular back rooms as we see an entire replication of the outside world. Kane has stated that there are no levels in his series and they are just sections in the back rooms. I have also seen a popular claim going around is that throughout the series multiple people cough while in the back rooms. Marvin even coughs at the end of the video and this could represent what people are saying. The claim is that when someone starts to cough, they are starting to begin the process of turning into the bacteria. They would need to get out immediately and thankfully Marvin is able to as seen in the next video. The whole point of the report video is to basically show the aftermath of pitfalls so this is more of a follow up video. We start off with the crew safely returning to the facility. At least out of all the people to survive a monster chase in the series, it's Marvin. We learn throughout the video that nobody at Async even knows that these monsters even exist. We get shown live reactions to some Async employees as they are watching Marvin's footage that he recorded during the expedition. While this is happening, we also have another Async employee walking down the hallway to approach a phone. Whoever this guy is calling, I'm sure it is to alert the higher ups that this is dangerous and they should be doing something about it. When looking at how these acing employees are reacting to the footage, they don't scream or anything like that. They look in utter confusion at first and then utter horror at what they are looking at. This debunks a theory I had in my first backroom video by saying that acing could possibly be evil. In reality, they are just a company trying to figure out a way to provide infinite storage. Near the end of the video, we see that employees are sealing the way in the direction that the monster came from. They also put extra defense near the main area of the threshold just to be safe. Many people thought that when this video came out, Acing closed up shop and never touched the backrooms again. If this was the case, I honestly would not blame them, however it is shown later on that they are still on board with the project. I remember when this video first came out, it had mixed opinions. This was because the video was mainly live action. I thought that something like this was needed because you were able to project terror through emotions more effectively. I felt more uneasy knowing that even the company that founded the backrooms are scared of what they have just witnessed. Overall, one of the best backroom videos from Kane to date. Not really because of how it distanced itself from the regular backroom formula, but because of how it built suspense while leaving you with questions. This video also has our first secret link of the day. I will be going over it after this other video because I feel as if it would make more sense. In the video title presentation, we begin in the setting of a conference room. Here we have a video presentation about async being played. In this video, we are shown a structured plan about how async will handle its newly found complex. We are given future references and even future huge plans going further beyond just being an infinite storage unit. The whole purpose of this video seems to be that async is trying to get this project approved by the government. That is why we see employees giving a government official a tour of the facility. Near the end of the video, things start to become more interesting as before this video, people questioned whatever happened to that one async employee from the informational video. It seems we got our answer as they have seemed to have been teleported into the future. The employees that are currently working get notified that someone has invaded the facility. This ended up being the same employee from the informational video. I can prove this because of how similar it was in their perspective. People and even film theory speculated that something like this would occur and so it did. However, it seems that while we got our answer, it just left us with even more questions. How is the complex able to do this? What happened to the employee after he was found months later? 
Unfortunately, as the series progresses, we only just get more questions. Alright, now we have our first secret video being 9780415263573. This video seems to be straight to the point here. We see a road with cars passing by and one of them happens to disappear out of thin air. This gives us confirmation that even something such as a car can be no clipped into the back rooms. While this video seems basic enough, there is actually a hidden meaning behind the long title. Thanks to YouTube user 3beta, we were able to find out the meaning behind this title. It says, and I quote, The title of this video translates to the yellow wallpaper in the ISBN book code. The Yellow Wallpaper is a book about a woman's mental health deteriorating while on a rest cure with her family. She's obsessed with the yellow wallpaper in her room, which resembles a lot of the tone of yellow in the back rooms, which points to her fall into psychosis and depression throughout the book. Not sure what this means in the whole big grand scheme of things, but if anyone's willing to dig deeper, then be my guest. Now, I'm not even going to attempt to dig deeper here as I have no idea how this book could represent the series other than the color yellow. I thought that this was a nice touch from Kane and it added more depth to a 30 second video. This however would not be the last time that we see this exact same car. I never thought I would see The Simpsons being related to the series but here we are. This actually came before the other video but I honestly forgot that this video existed. For starters, know that this is the only video in the series not published by Kane himself. Rather, it is posted by some account named Laura Harris. Not much seems to be happening as this is just a regular episode of The Simpsons. However, that changes quickly as the channel airing The Simpsons seems to glitch and we cut to a commercial. It seems a little weird and in seconds we just cut back to the episode. It doesn't seem like there is anything meaningful behind this, but like all videos so far, there is. The main theory for this video is that the threshold was being tested around this time that the episode was airing. Some glitch in the threshold probably caused the TV to glitch. What I found weird though is that this Simpsons episode in particular aired in 1991. The commercial that was shown in the video was a commercial about Triple Action. This commercial aired in the year 2000, so that is almost a decade gap. Now, this recording could have just been a rerun taking place in 2000. However, I would like to think that it somehow changed the channel 9 years into the future. This is rather unlikely, but it is something to take note of. Another weird tie-in to the backrooms is that the episode that was shown was about Bart getting hit by a car. We just covered a video about a car so it could all tie into this. In actuality, who knows the true meaning as to why this video was even a thing. I just find it cool that I can say that The Simpsons is a part of the backroom's lore. We now move on to one of the biggest episodes of the series being Found Footage 2. Much like the first found footage, we once again follow someone's journey into the backrooms as they noclip and roam the backrooms. This video starts off with a girl who decides to record this strange phenomenon that she has seen. Every object that she would throw into this weird circle would just magically disappear. After a few test runs, she decides to further test it with a measuring tape. I feel it's like vibrating. For a good portion of the video, we see the girl wander inside the back rooms much like the first found footage with Kane. Here, we see more interesting rooms as they all mostly contain some type of furniture. At first, I believe that Async put this furniture here as a reference for their eventual housing plan that was shown in presentation. Eventually, the girl in the video stumbles upon the car that no clipped and crashed into the back rooms from the previous video that we covered. I can confirm that this is actually the same car that we saw earlier no clipped, so I thought that this was a nice touch. We can prove this because these two cars are the exact same car model. Unfortunately for our driver, he was not so lucky as the only thing that was found of him was a bloody handprint. The girl sees this bloody handprint, decides to follow it and even enter a room filled with even more furniture and even a painting. As she is staring at the painting though, a bacteria hidden in plain sight emerges and starts chasing the girl. Obviously near the end, the girl doesn't live or does she? I actually do not know because normally you don't see electricity on the walls of the back rooms every day. I found this whole ending pretty weird in my opinion. I don't know which was weirder, the electricity or the fact that someone actually has this recording. It doesn't seem plausible as I'm sure this girl died in the video or was she able to escape? If so, who exactly is playing this tape? Why was that weird painting there near the entity? 
How do objects such as furniture and even a car make it into the back rooms? How is this all possible? Well, thankfully, we at least got a few answers in our next and final secret video of today. Okay, I don't know about you, but man, this is the song the song for this video is just really catchy, like goddamn. Uh, before we actually talk about the actual video, this song is just amazing. Uh, for those who don't know, it's basically time passages, but like better in my opinion. Uh, the song is so good that it even distracts you from the weird talking in the background along with the floating decapitated head in the sky. Yeah, this video has a lot of weird stuff. Um, this video is probably one of the more sinister videos of the series aside having such a cheerful song in the background. First off, the title of the video is titled Home underscore 27647.mov. The title actually makes more sense once you realize what is actually going on here. On your first watch, you probably don't really recognize anything. It's just what appears to be a random recording for a possible trip, you know, just for memories. When analyzing this video, you start to notice very weird things, such as spotting an async employee, hearing weird voices in the background, seeing a weird distorted head in the sky, and even seeing a painting. The end of this video seems to slowly focus a lot on this specific painting. Once you notice it, everything changes as this is the exact same painting as the one in the second found footage video. It is theorized that parts of the supposed home that was shown connects to the furniture shown in the found footage video. If this is true, how did parts of this house no clip into the back room? Unfortunately, we don't have an answer to that yet. All we know is that what the backrooms can noclip is limitless, and we've been proven that time and time again. In Kane's Ko-Fi page, it is even shown that we see a cabin in the Async research facility. It could be that Async themselves are trying to bring these large and massive objects into the backrooms. I will go more in depth when we get to the theorizing portion. We finally come to the final video that we will be covering today. This is the most recent video that Kane has uploaded. One thing to note here is that this video doesn't have the backrooms word in the title and isn't even listed in the backrooms playlist. The only videos that are not listed into the backrooms playlist are the secret videos but unlike those, I remember is actually public. Despite that though, we can agree that this is for the series as many shots are related to the backrooms. This feels more like a trailer for what is left to come rather than an actual video. I would say that this video is the most intriguing and mysterious. It seems we pick up where we left off from the second found footage. This can be proven by the familiar scenery and wind chimes that are present in both videos. We then get introduced to a person who starts talking. This is the first time anyone has actually directly talked to us. Before we even go any further, who or what is talking to us exactly? The voice seems to be that of a man. The man in question talks about what we can presume to be the back rooms. This seems likely as he refers to the complex as the sea. He goes on that a group of people are overlooking that same sea. He also mentioned that he had a home once, but it ended up getting taken by this exact same sea. 
We are shown various images of things that are related to the back rooms. We see a missing poster on the ground. Many people missed it, but if you look closely, it shows the model of the car that they are last spotted in. The car describes the exact model of the car that was no-clipped and later found by the girl in found footage too. We are shown the prototype of the threshold that was shown in the prototype video. For the rest of his speech that he gave, it really didn't make sense to me, at least not yet until we get more videos. Other than the poster and the prototype, the last thing that interested me was the last photo. It shows a grey picture of what looks to be the locker room of the async research facility. Thanks to pitfalls, we were able to pretty much confirm that after a presentation, the series really seemed to hit the brakes, and honestly I'm hooked for what is next. This will probably be the last video for a while, as Ken himself has stated that school has been keeping him busy, which is completely understandable. Now, what can we gather exactly from all these videos, and what can we conclude after watching every single one of Kane Pixel's Backrooms videos so far? Well my friends, I believe it is now time to theorize. Alright everyone, now that we covered the recent 9 videos to come from this series, what possible theories can we really make of this? Last video about the backrooms, I said how Ivan Beck could possibly be evil, but that was shut down in a podcast that Kane was on saying that nobody is the villain in this story. What we gathered from these 9 videos left us with more questions than answers unfortunately. We were able to learn what the prototype of the threshold was. We learned that the backrooms can replicate the outside world. Learned that async employees had no idea that there were even entities in the back rooms debunking my theory even more. We learned that cars and even parts of a house can be no clipped into the back rooms. Learned that electricity, for some reason, can affect the back rooms. With all of that, what can we gather from just all of this in general? Well, first off, let's talk about something from Pitfalls. We saw that it looks like the back rooms can replicate what is real life. That might have been what this async employee saw on the other side of the Pitfalls. It would also make sense as parts of a house could be replicated and maybe not even no-clipped. However, in I Remember, the house was overtaken by the sea, so I wouldn't say it was replicated but instead taken. My theory is that someone or something is responsible for a little part of the backrooms I was showcased in the second found footage. All they want to do is try and replicate what they once knew, maybe the voice in I Remember is that same person. They had a home once, but it was all gone to the backrooms and now he just wants his home back and the real life he once knew. The entity in the second found footage could very well be the same guy. If this is true, then let us start from the beginning. This guy is in his car driving just an average normal day and then he suddenly no clips out of reality. He crashes into a wall and doesn't know what to do. He is almost dead so he decides to just sit there in a room. However, the fungus affects this guy before he could die and he turns into the bacteria. His injuries due to a car crash may have influenced the reasoning as to why this entity can use electricity. It would also explain why there is furniture around because he is trying to bring back everything he once knew. We know that this guy's name is James because of the missing poster to describe the exact same car model that he was driving. I don't think this is for a big plot point and I don't really think that this guy is a mastermind behind it all. He just became a bacteria who ended up becoming aware of his surroundings and now is just in constant pain and suffering. His only way to cope is by bringing back items that can even slightly make him feel human again. There is another theory I saw floating around that James actually hit a bacteria who was the guy who appeared at the end of the home video in Missing Persons video. Because of the electricity from the car, when it hit the bacteria, it gave it electricity. As for James, well, he most likely didn't make it. This can also work with my theory, but just swap James for this guy. Both of these theories can answer a certain question though. Who exactly is the person who watches the second found footage tape? This can debunk my theory as the person talking to us in the I Remember video can also be the guy who watched the second found footage because we noticed that it's pretty much the same setting. We can prove this because of the wind chimes present in both videos. Honestly, this, this series has become more confusing than ever and it seems all we can do for now is just speculate and not come to a definitive answer just yet. Overall though, the series has been a treat to watch thus far. It really brought significance and relevance back to the backrooms overall. I believe Kane Pixels has stated that the series is around the halfway mark at this point. Take that with a grain of salt though, because I don't really remember. With that being said, I see myself making probably two other videos about this series. The third video will probably cover more of his work once it releases, and the fourth video will be my thoughts on the entire series once it concludes. I don't really expect those videos to come out until like, maybe the end of next year. With those videos, like, Obviously I have the first Backrooms video and then I have the second Backrooms video. This is my only horror content. Uh, who knows, maybe I might make like half of my channel horror related some days because I honestly just enjoy making these videos. 
Credit once again to the Liminal Archives, the fandom, and the wiki because chances are without these guys this series would not even be popular. Who knew that a simple 4chan post of an anonymous room can go so far? It really proves that our minds and creativity can expand upon anything and make it into a masterpiece. With all that being said, thank you everyone for watching this video and I will see you during the next moon. Peace out.